Ah, for Christ's sakes. Tell Jacobson if he plans on making editor-in-chief, he's got to start working with me. I can't keep getting him these scoops if he's going to send high school journalists who don't know enough to wear something that would blend in. Jeez, what kind of Woodstein? Don't think to at least show dressed up like an investigator, a Coast Guard guy, something. I mean, didn't you ever see Fletch? What, are they just handing out those diplomas nowadays? All right, look. I got you a copy of the initial report, and I can get you into the cabin, but you gotta make yourself real scarce after that. Anybody catches you, I don't know you. And no goddamn flash photography, brainchild. Hold up a sec. Heinz to Marsh. Heinz to Marsh. Marsh, they need you up in the bridge. Over. There. The security room will be clear. Head down the stairs behind you and stay low. When you get down there, wait for me to call off the guy guarding gangway A. As soon as he leaves, get your ass moving and don't let him see you. I'll give you a couple of minutes, but don't dilly-dally. In and out, okay? Don't forget to stay out of sight. If anyone sees you, you're on your own. Take the stairs up to the security room. There'll be a computer in there. The password is Lighthouse. Lighthouse. All one word. You getting all this? Now get a move on. And don't forget to tell Jacobson I get double my usual fee for this one. Just head down there. Gangway B stairs. Now go. Now get a move on. And don't forget to tell Jacobson I get double my usual fee for this one. Just head down there. Gangway B stairs. Now go. Now get a move on. And don't forget to tell Jacob. Heinz to Jacobson. Uh, Anderson. Heinz to Anderson. Come in, Anderson. Come check this out. I just saw a baleen whale. Yeah?
Waiting for your chauffeur to pull around the dinghy. Get a move on. You waiting for your chauffeur to pull around the dinghy?
Anything I can do for you tonight? Concerning? Who exactly? Similarly to the other victim. Did you miss me? Judging by the way the boards lit up, I'd say you couldn't live without me. You make me feel so desirable, LA. So many callers, so little time. If you don't get through to me tonight, don't let it break your heart. I'm here each and every AM. So keep dialing those magic numbers and just maybe you'll be as lucky as a good call. What's your name? Hello, Greg. Up late, aren't we? Well, there, Deb. I work a night shift here at the power plant pretty much alone. The only thing that gets me through this shift is your pretty little voice. Thank Passengers. Cambodian officials have dispatched several mili- in. Hey, uh, I know this might seem creepy and all, but please don't blow me off, okay? Someone told me I could find you here. I mean, I've been looking all over for you since that night because I just wanted to I'm in your debt. I want to help you. I owe you my life, and I feel like I need to repay you. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm Heather. Heather Poe. I'm not weirding you out or anything, am I? I can be. I know I can. I'll do everything I can for you. I... Look. Here, here, I, I got you this. I thought you might be able to use it. I can be useful to you. I'd do anything, just tell me you'll let me help you. Let me stay with you. Make me feel this way. Really? I promise you won't regret it, promise. I'll get you money, I'll get you things, everything. I want to be... <sighs> important to you. Uh, I know where you live. I checked there first. I'll wait for you at your place. And when you do come back, I'll take care of whatever you want. I'd do anything for you.
Evening, Chief. You back to see Mr. LaCroix again? Yeah, he told me to send you up as soon as you came in. Lots of people here to see Mr. LaCroix. Nice guy. He seems a little different, though. I wonder if he's... Ah, that's his business. Ah, you know, I'm keeping the undesirables out and the innocent safe and secure. I'm the thin blue line that separates the crazies from the hard-working decent folks. Yep, as long as I'm around, Mr. LaCroix's got nothing to worry about. Yeah, you go right on up and see Mr. LaCroix. Yeah, you go right on up and see Mr. LaCroix. Yeah, you go right on up and see Mr. LaCroix. I've said all I need to for now. I don't have time for a monologue. Give me the bullet points of what you saw. And the Ankaran sarcophagus. What did you see? Opened. Let's not jump to conclusions. Give me the manifest in your notes. I'll sort this mess later. You might have noticed when you came in the parade of malingering mollycoddles filing out. Those were the Primogen, this city's clan elders, a worrisome bunch devoted first and foremost to the security of their own skin, which is why they were here. It seems Alistair Grout, the Malkavian Primogen, has either forgotten how to answer his phone, or is missing. Each minor problem like a grain of sand, each night I inherit the desert. The Sabbat's appearance has put the Primogen on edge. Grout's mansion is in the Hollywood Hills. I need you to pry Grout out of whatever crack he's crawled into and have him contact us. Every problem that's brought to me has to be dealt with. It's the seemingly insignificant, time-consuming trivialities that plague my night. Which is why, when I assign you a simple task, I only want to hear unbridled vehemence on your part. Understood? My thanks. And that goes a long way in this city. I'm assigning you something that can't be screwed up, charitably. This is your chance to gain a small but significant amount of my good graces back. I strongly urge you to accept. Go see Grout. Yes, about Grout. As I said, Grout is the Malkavian primogen. His behavior and home are... Eccentric, to say the least. He's developed a paranoid bent lately, so you may have to check under every bed in the place for him. I suppose I can spare a few seconds. Yes. They are the representatives of their clans, though more often than not they represent their own best interests. They stay close to power, but are too fearful of the consequences to wield it. Nonetheless, I seek their counsel on occasion. Yes, which is... When we hear from Grout, you may come back. Until then. The Primogen hate to be kept waiting, and they let me know that frequently. I suppose I can spare a few seconds. Which is...
Hello, Neonate. How can I be of assistance? Of course. What is it you would like to know? No more than yourself. But I do know that LaCroix is much too focused on acquiring it. His obvious need for it reveals a weakness that his enemies may one day exploit. I do not know, although I must admit that I sense a change in the night air, something subtle and not altogether pleasant. Perhaps the arrival of the sarcophagus is the harbinger of something more dreadful. I will say no more. What is it you would like to know? Surely, what else would you like to know? Of course. What is it you would like to know? Of course. find out. No kidding. Well, I guess there's got to be something in there then, huh? The Camarilla is going to be scraping for answers when this gets out. It's in the air, all right. I've been around longer than most, kid, and I've felt the change in the past few decades. It's in the blood. We're racing towards something. We're picking up speed all the time. You've seen the evidence with your own eyes. You're caught up in all of this. So, other than that, what else is new? Where are you headed now? So, a Malk's gone AWOL. If that caught LaCroix off guard, I don't know how he's dodged a hundred years of sunrise. Sure thing, kiddo. Fire away. What's on your mind? What's up? Heard anything? Two minutes, newbie. All the time I've got to spare right now. Came to California to get out of the Dust Bowl during the 30s. Been fighting this fight since the 40s when we kicked out the can. I was new to it all back then. Not a whole lot of people from those nights still around. And some of them are. They're just not anarchs anymore. That's a stupid question. Freedom doesn't come cheap. At any time, you gotta be ready to defend it. A lot of blood's been shed for what we have. Roll over. Play ball. Give up all we fought for, died for. Do you really think that's an option? Do you really think anybody would be willing to trade their freedom to become a cog in an elder's game? If you do, then you just don't get it. Time's up. Come around in a few nights if you're still alive. Maybe I'll have time to kill. But I doubt it. Time's up. Come around in a few nights if you're Heard still alive. Heard anything? Maybe I'll have time to kill. But I doubt God it. Goddamn cameras. You guys are all the same.
Louis Samuel. Nice night out, huh? Did you miss me? Judging by the... Search through the surrounding jungle. I'm so glad you're back. I've been waiting here just like you asked. Your place is, um... Nice. Is there something I can do for you? Anything. Just ask. You're a night person. Me too. What? Uh, you're joking, right? That's like slang for something like catcher or some fetish term, right? Not like a blah, blah, vampire, right? No. No, there's no such thing. You're... This isn't funny anymore. No, please, don't leave. I don't care what you are. Just don't leave me. What can I do to show my appreciation? Me? I'm not so special, you know? I go to college. I'm majoring in fashion design. I think I'm pretty creative. I just started school a year late because my... My parents died. Um, car crash. I didn't really have anyone special in my life until you came along. I understand. Um, here, here, that's all I've got. Anything I can do for you? Okay. Anything I can do for you? Okay. Anything I can do for you? Okay. Anything I can do for you? Please, take me inside of you.
Anything I can do for you? Anything I can do for you? Okay. Thanks for coming back. What you need? Alright, here's what we got today. Where to? You! What are you doing here? Out now. You should get out of here. This place is bad news. Pardon me.
It is quite peculiar, the happenings I've been made to witness for my supernatural longevity. I am thinking of one unfortunate phenomenon in particular, of unique interest to my station, both as a professional and as a sufferer of this vampiric condition. It seems the stream of time has begun to erode the moorings of my chosen course of study, for the methodologies that gave birth to psychology are slowly disappearing. I find myself in an era that overlooks the physical component of psychological pathology time and again in favor of the sophistic practices of Freud. Phrenology, dactopintalism, and the rest of the old guard has fallen by the wayside, its champions all silenced in death, with my unique exception. Would that I could make my voice heard again, although it may be suspicious should I return to popular medical discourse fifty years after my apparent death. <sighs> no, better that I continue my studies into the psychoses in secret. One day, may I hold up my own cure as validation of the methods. I am confident no cure for my condition or that of my beloved wife lies within our figurative minds waiting to be unlocked by the correct combination of memories recovered from our childhoods. And I'm most certain it has nothing to do with the relationship between myself, my parents, and my genitals. Sorry, Sigmund, but I choose to stay my course. In time, too, may your star fade and disappear.
Another unfortunate casualty to tide of time, insane asylums. I lament their loss not only as brokerage houses for the breadth and depth of human psychosis, but also I shall mourn the disappearance of that peculiar environment present only in an insane asylum. That palpable atmosphere of blistered brains and churning bowels, the odiferous melange of freely flowing bodily humours, that gently rolling cacophony of distant sobs and screams, the muttered cursing at perceived enemies, and the blissful gurgling of the lobotomized, like a newborn babe discovering the sky. Hmm. Huh. I shall still find test subjects as surely as I find bloody sustenance in the night, but this climate, I fear, may never be replicated.
Often I reflect with great regret on the missed opportunity that was my infector. Had I been conscious after the attack, I could have stopped the orderlies from locking her in the roaming pen. What I would give for just one interview, a few simple questions of the plague-ridden woman who met her end that dawn. Of course, there is no guarantee she would have been any more helpful than my current crop of test subjects, mewling wretches. Few could be called enthusiastic. Given the nature of the tests, I cannot expect the same fervor from all, but a modicum of cooperation would be appreciated. Animals. The one called John went so far as to gnaw off his arm and escape into the floorboards like some feral rodent. I still hear him scurrying about at night. He must be making an atrocious mess in there. My studies proceed at a languid pace. I'm mired in a foul ennui as my wife's illness advances. My subjects grow restless without proper supervision, but I cannot pull myself back from this black depression. How many nights I've wasted now, gazing from the tower walk, pondering the frailty of existence.
After decades of solitary study into this affliction, I have learned that it is by no means mine alone. Indeed, the city is home to an entire society of similarly afflicted individuals with whom I've only recently made contact. They are an understandably standoffish sort, by and large, but I have been able to confirm with them that the condition is indeed vampirism, which apparently comes in a multitude of strains, each with a spectacular set of symptoms such as invisibility and even a sort of lycanthropy. Through numerous official interactions with the governing body of this secret society, I have concluded that their fundamental understanding of the vampiric condition is woefully lacking and mired in suspicion and pseudo-religious dogma that would make a Turk balk for its strictures. Indeed, they seemed impressed with my studies and the eloquence with which I was able to present them. Apparently, the typical sufferer of my particular strain of vampirism is far from the vanguard of the King's English. So impressed were they that they even offered me an office in their government, a rather high office by the sound of things, I believe I shall accept. If nothing else, it should provide a lofty vantage point from which to observe the breadth and epidemiology of the affliction so that I may move more expeditiously toward a cure. I have accepted the role of Primogen for Clan Malkavian, the dreadfully winsome label applied to the particular strain of vampirism I suffer, so named for some supposed vampire father figure of old, more poppycock grown from a backward culture that seems interminably drawn to children's tales and the fiction of Victorian romance when it should concern itself with the science behind their suffering. No matter. For I have taken this office for no greater reason than to advance my research. I must make mention, however, that even among my would-be peers in this governing body of vampires, the level of paranoia and superstition is frightening. Their intelligence is not the question, no, indeed. As they courted me for this appointment, I had to suspect that their overtures were hand tailored to what must be my obvious infatuation with reason, for the devil would do well to have such honey-tongued tempters. Even so, I could not help but notice the dressing of language these vampire leaders chose for their siren song. Whether it is born of habit, from addressing their unwashed, ill-educated subjects, or from their own deep-seated beliefs, their linguistic flourishes belie a faith in superstition over the providence of empirical reason that must be an all-pervasive theme in this society of darkest night. Damn it all, now I'm doing it too.
I am no longer safe. I know it. The voices have proven themselves authentic, and I have withdrawn from the Vampire Society entirely. My absence will no doubt draw attention, but I could no longer hold my fragile composure around the ravenous eyes of my vampire peers, especially not around him. The voices compelled me to make what I fear is a Faustian bargain, but I had to, for their demands are constant and merciless. I have secluded myself within the mansion. I know he will strike out at me. He will go to any length to achieve his ambitions, and he knows it, I know. I have taken precautions to protect my beloved wife. Her cure will have to wait until our immediate safety is guaranteed. The mansion was constructed with security in mind, but at that time I was not privy to the full range of vampire capabilities. The voices echo in the twisted corridors of my psyche, dark whisperings of a macabre and formless menace, the approach of which portends an end, an end to all of this. The voices have increased in frequency and direction of late. They have begun to stay with me long after conversation has ceased and are serving as quite a distraction. I fear others are beginning to notice my preoccupation at the vampire gatherings. I am thinking again of the particular vampire of whom I spoke previously, who I dare not name for my growing fear. If the voices are to be believed, then my caution is warranted, for they speak of his blackest crimes, both past and future. More than once, I have seen the suspicion in his eyes and heard the distrust in his voice when speaking with me. The fear must register on my face, as it is all I can do in these moments to keep from crying out in chorus with the voices.
Be by my hand. No matter. Soon your self made kings and false prophets and all who bear the mark of the beast will be washed from the earth for the coming of the Lord. Yes, you burn. Tell them it was Grünfeld Bach who sent your damned soul to that lake of fire. All agents of Satan shall return to whence they came. Let this righteous display serve as a promise to all who serve the arch fiend Lacroix. I'm coming for you, Lacroix. By the power of the Lord, I will cleanse your black soul. I am no longer safe. I know it. The voices have proven themselves authentic, and I have withdrawn from the vanguard of society entirely. My absence would no doubt draw attention, but I could no longer hold my fragile composure around the ravenous eyes of my vampire peers. Especially not around him. The voices compelled me to make what I fear is a Faustian bargain, but I had to, for their demands are constant and merciless. I have secluded myself within the mansion. I know he will strike out at me. He will go to any length to achieve his ambitions, and he knows it, I know. I have taken precautions to protect my beloved one. The cure will have to wait for me. Immediate safety is guaranteed. The mansion was constructed with security in mind, but at that time I was not privy to the full range of vampire capabilities. The voices echo in the twisted corridors of my psyche. Dark whisperings of a macabre and formless menace, the approach of which portends an end, an end to all of this.
Thank <laughs> you.